let's evaluate the indefinite integral. Integral of sine x of cosine cubed x dx. So I like this problem because you can attack it from a few different ways. And the second way we attack it will bring up some issues with integration by substitution that are a little bit subtle. All right, so notice, okay, we have wacky notation for cosine to a power. We don't put the power on the outside. We put it over the cosine just so we don't confuse it with what's in the parentheses. So this is really sine x dx over cosine x whole thing cubed. Okay, now we see that there's a composition of functions in here. So I want to target the inside. So the inside is cosine x. So we're going to let that be equal to u when we go through our integration by substitution list. So u equals cosine x. Next, I'm going to take the derivative of u with respect to x. And that's going to give me this little gadget du equals the derivative times dx or du equals minus sine x dx. I isolate dx, which gives me du over minus sine x. Now we substitute. So going to the second version of our integral, we're going to put in for dx, which is du over minus sine x, and then the cos cubed becomes u cubed. And then we notice the signs cancel out nicely. Okay, I'm going to bring the minus 1 out to the front. I'm going to move the u3 to the top. So when I move to the top, it picks up a minus sign. So I have minus integral u to the minus 3 du. To get the antiderivative of this, I just add 1, which gives me a minus 2, and then flip that over, which gives me minus a half. We have the constant. I put everything in parentheses, so that way if there's more, term, more than one terms here, we'll pick up that minus sign correctly, but it's not an issue here. The minus signs cancel, giving me 1 half cosine to the minus 2, and then the constant we can multiply by whatever. It's still going to be the same constant. So... Note that this is a um, formula for flipping over cosine. 1 over cosine equals secant. So this is really 1 half secant squared x plus a constant. Okay, to check, I take the derivative of this and make sure it agrees with the original. Now, I won't take the derivative of this. I'll actually take the derivative of the 1 half cosine x to the minus 2 because we got from here to here just by an identity which we're hoping we used right. So for our check, I bring the minus 2 down, gives me a minus 1. We subtract 1 off the exponent, gives me a minus 3. Derivative of the inside, using the chain rule, is minus sine of x. Collecting everything gives me sine of x over cosine cubed x. And that agrees with the original integrand. Let's take another look at this. So probably you're going to go with the first one, but I like the second way of doing this just because it's going to bring up a point which a little bit subtle with the integration by substitution. So one thing I could do here is if I'm a real kind of into trig functions, I could notice immediately that I could break this thing up into sine x over cosine x and 1 over cosine squared of x. The first one is just tangent. Second one is secant squared of x dx. One thing we notice, tangent, if I let that be my function, secant squared will be the derivative of my f. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So the idea, the point I'm trying to make is, right off the bat, this doesn't look like an integration by substitution. I mean, if you were to guess, at some composition here, you'd go with trying to substitute out the secant, and that would actually work, but let's stick with this one. Here, notice, I have my f and I have my f prime, so it's really the same as looking at f with an exponent 1. So, Let's just see that this will work if I believe in this. If I put u equal to the inside here, it's going to be u equals tangent x. So by my rule, du equals the derivative of that times
times dx. So we wind up with derivative of tan x is secant squared x. I isolate my dx. That gives me du over secant squared. We substitute everything into the original integral here. I get, okay, tan x becomes u, secant squared stays where it is, and then dx becomes du over secant squared x. The secant squareds go away, and I wind up with integral of u du. This is u to the 1, so I add 1 gives me a square, flip it over, gives me a half in front, and then I add my constant. Putting back in for the tangent gives me 1 half tangent squared x plus c. Now you might be worried because here we have 1 half secant squared x, here I have 1 half tangent squared x. Okay, they don't look the same, but actually we're fine because they differ by a constant. Just remember, secant squared equals tangent squared x plus 1. Now since most people won't remember that, you should remember how you get it. You start off with cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1, and then just divide everything through by a cosine squared. So the point here is, be very careful about looking for substitutions that look like this. Sometimes you have an integration by substitution, which isn't obvious, but you have to think about it a little bit differently.